took away from the train wreck. You can blame it on the tech or the disrespect. You can play better, button check. Button check. What is up, Butt Check family? Welcome back to yet again a beautiful Sunday morning of checking these buttons. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. Chapters down below, as always, if you want to skip around. And of course, the sub button right there. Thank you guys for everything. We got so much to talk about. We got tournaments this weekend. Tekken 8 is still blowing things out the water, among other things. Without further ado, ladies and gents, let's go. All right, now into them first set of disqualified CPT winner. Buttons that need to be checked. Okay, so if you're not too familiar, I, I wasn't. I actually did not learn of this until I was tagged in the story by some of the individuals actually going through it. With that being said, I was like, damn, I almost missed it because I was tagged in it about a day or so ago, right? So once I looked into it, well, I'm about to talk too much. Anyway, let's unpack it. We'll talk after. So this was the initial post, right? Um, when he won, right? They're saying, congratulations to Anik for winning the Fighters Dojo CPT WW 2023 Asia South Regional Finals earning the right to play at Cap Cup X, right? Top eight, you can see down below, obviously, he's number one, and you see everybody that followed, and he's rocking that chun. I noticed this clip from James Shen congratulating him as well. Check it out. We have a representative from Bangladesh, which is, again, super cool. Shout outs to the absolute world warrior style of this of these uh, qualifiers, I mean, to get players from all sorts of different regions like that is is super neat. So I, I'm really happy uh, for Sianik. So hopefully uh, he has a, success, a successful Capcom Cup. And apparently like when it happened, he even had his homies with him. It was a family affair. There's actually a clip like when it went down, check it out. <laughs> yeah! yeah. 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 Go ahead, from Bangladesh. Yes. I hope we can play more again and again after this tournament. And if we finish this tournament, we will start playing again. All right, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, good job, Sionic. Good job throughout the entire World Warrior event. Good job today. And good luck for CPD. And, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, as long as you have the power of friendship with... That's what's up, right? You love to see homies having your back like that. And it goes even deeper because he was on the news. He was featured, I believe, like on his local news. Check out the clip. Apollo Drishti computer monitor. Onishilon cholche jortal. This game ta onak choto bola the khile arshila. Jokhon eta dekhlam je eta e-sports shati involve proyeche game gulo. Pothome amader match gula. So you love to see it, right? So much community love. Everybody's excited. He gets to go play for the one milli, right? At the biggest cap cup ever until unfortunately he has visa problems now you saw this a lot this year well i'm sorry i should say last year there was a lot right and you've seen it in the past before where players qualify but they have trouble getting to america because there's something wrong with their visa amazingly enough i'm talking about I'm, i mean i don't want to overshoot this but i want to say it's like 70 to 80 percent of the times they tag sherry Jenix, and i don't know if you know sherry she's been in the fgc doing the damn thing for a while right great player and whatnot Somehow she's able to help these players because when I see them tag her, everybody's like, tag Sherry, tag Sherry. She helps them and they're always like, hey, got my visa, thanks to Sherry. So I'm not sure what black magic or miracles she's able to pull off behind the scenes, but that's amazing. I think a lot of people need to take more time out to salute her. And with that being said, Anik was having trouble finding his visa or getting his visa as well until literally just the other day. He posted this on the 26th. So by the time you see this two days ago saying, I just got my visa this morning, I really hope to be able to travel and play in Capcom X to represent Bangladesh and South Asia, hoping things work out. And of course, tagging Cap Cup and Cap Fighters. So that's what's up. You're like, okay, he finally got his visa. But if you go to the official site of all the qualified players, I mean, literally just pull it up. He's not there. Go to all the qualified players. And you might be thinking, okay, well, maybe they just haven't put his picture up because uh, you know they were waiting for him to confirm, not so much. Because if you go to that region, like where he's supposed to see, you can see the actual player that came second to him in that World Warrior by the name is, what is it, at Shadukin? Look, there's this picture right there, right? And if we go back, so if we go back to that original post, right, where it says, congratulations to Anik. Now, if I'm butchering the name, I'm so sorry. But go back to that original post, right? Go down below where it says top eight. You can see him, but right underneath, you see it right there, Shadokin. That's the gentleman, obviously, that got second place, and now he's qualified. He's actually in 
cap cup. And the reason being is because they didn't think that Anik was gonna get his passport, or I'm sorry, his visa in time. That's why he's making this post saying, you know, he hopes that everything works out and that he can represent Bangladesh. And if you see the community responding, this is where I was tagged in it right here, right? Right here saying, our World Warrior winner from South Asia is reportedly being denied the spot he rightfully earned at CCX due to the slight delays in the visa acquisition process. In our view, they still have sufficient time to accommodate our champion help appreciated. Then it gets even deeper. I see Hurricane posting on it saying, please event organizers, tournaments where the winner is meant to be flown must conclude at least two months before the final event. Not all countries and residents in a country are visa free where you can just wake up and jump on the first plane without dealing with this situation. Then others adding to it saying, hope Capcom will make some rational decisions 20 plus days remaining for the tournament. Okay, so damn, I was definitely off. I thought it was like 30 or 40, it's about 20. Okay, everybody, sorry for this update like this, but I literally just got this once again as I was editing, um, I believe, of some friends of C. Anik. And by the way, I'm probably butchering the name because I noticed the commentators pronounced it S. I. Anik, um, but then James Shen pronounced it C. Anik. So sorry if I'm getting it wrong, but we're going to go with uh, C. Anik. So obviously, since they're in a different time zone, I just got this message from them. They said, uh, yes, uh, Capcom actually did respond to them, right? He said, uh, here's a quick timeline time of some context. Visa processing for the U.S. can take forever in Bangladesh, sometimes six to eight months, right? After Sianik won CPT, he was told while any visa would do, most players use the athlete visa. So he pursued the uh, athlete visa and found out that the requirements that Capcom was unable to help with. Uh, so after some delays on messages from Capcom's end, Sianik was told uh, to go for a business slash tourist visa, regular interview date set for October, 2024, holy shit, this year. Alarmed, CNE paid a hefty extra amount for an emergency expedited interview date. Capcom suddenly alerted Anik about a deadline they opted to enforce at nine days after their email. Agency unable to secure Anik an interview date until the 26th of January. Capcom then let Anik know that they are moving forward with the competitor who placed second at the World Warrior event. Anik got approved for the visa on the 26th of January and let Capcom know immediately. Capcom responded via email saying verbatim, your interview is past our deadline, not even acknowledging the visa acquisition. It must be noted that C. Anik spared no expense and wasted no time in his pursuit of the visa necessary so he can participate. Damn, that's crazy, right? So the parts that stick out, right, where they say Capcom suddenly alerted Anik about a deadline they opted to enforce nine days after their email. And right here, the nail in the coffin where it says, Capcom responded via email saying verbatim, your interview is past our deadline, not even acknowledging the, v the visa acquisition. So like they told them, we have the visa now and they ignored it <laughs> and just said, your interview is past our deadline. I guess basically going off the initial interview, right? Because they said, Initially, the interview was like October of this year, you know what I'm saying? Which is fucking insane. But like they said, like, yo, we got it expedited. We have it on deck. So why can't, why are we not acknowledging that at this point? I mean, that's wild. So damn, there you have it. Just look, I think the reason why this sucks so much is because you see his backstory. You see the family, you see where he comes from, people cheering for him. He gets to play for a dream. He gets to play for $1 million. We all know that's a chance of a lifetime, right? But then there's like, it's a weird radio silence after that. You don't see anything like on Enix page or anything on Shadowkin's page, just nothing. All of a sudden, Shadowkin is there for CPT. That's it. Like nobody's really talking about it. Until now, until you see this, right? So it's like, damn, Shadowkin's probably sitting in a really interesting spot, right? Because he automatically qualified, didn't expect it, but now he's seeing that Enix like has his visa but is it too little too late? And what do you do if you're Shadowkin? You know what I'm saying? Because technically he didn't do anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? He got him a trip, but is it too late? Is 20 days before the event too late for this kid to live his dream from Bangladesh? Remains to be seen because you just can't help but want to root for the underdog. Hope Capcom sees any of this, not just button check, but anything on social media. How y'all feeling? Let me know. All right, next up for the Tekken 8 community getting even crazier, buttons that need to be checked. So we know FGC is getting down on some Tekken 8 more than ever. Well, obviously it just came out.
Anyway, it's late, forgive me, right? We got a lot of hype action, and of course, we got some tournaments. We'll probably talk about that tomorrow. But for now, we got that Tekken 8, and we're just gonna cover it step by step to some of the crazy shit that's happening. First, I saw Ryan Hart post this saying, Kazuyo Bogart intro pose, hashtag Tekken 8. This man <laughs> literally dressed him up as Terry Bogart. The crazy, the crazy thing is, go down the thread. He's not the only one. There's a lot of people did it with other characters or him as well. I mean, you see Terry all over this shit. It's amazing. It's gold. I love it. Then, if that wasn't enough, it gets even better in that Kazuya world, right? They posted this, well, a lot of people did, saying, might have to pick up Tekken 8, y'all. I didn't know Kazuya was chill like that. And the one I originally saw this from was that Chaos Guy. I'll put his information down below. Definitely check him out. Let's check out the clip. Okay, right here, it says his hobbies, right? Check this out. This is insane. People are like, what? We didn't expect this. Look, the dude is a damn sneaker head. He's more than a sneaker head. He's a fucking sneaker monster. Look at this. He got every shoe ever invented. Imagine this shit. <laughs> How dope is that? I'm gonna let it play again. That's crazy, right? They didn't have to do that. I love it though. They're for the culture. I love that shit. Look at this. Can you imagine, y'all? Look at that shit. <laughs> Look at that, man. I'd be laughing evil like that too if I had that collection. Can you, can, oh, I can't even imagine. That's dope as hell. I just love how the devs do cool shit like that. They obviously don't have to do stuff like that, but I think it just makes the character that much, just makes them better. And of course, that FGC is loving it as well. You know what I'm saying, bros? Like, they're saying the same thing. They got literally every shoe or what the fuck this is, <laughs> what is this game about? It's peak. They love it. He got more heat than me. Uh, he's the GOAT. I see even Omni, right? Saying, uh, well, he's just laughing at it. But either way, you see people are loving it. And some of the top comments right here saying, Kazuya got him so fast on his feet, he was waiting for somebody to ask about his shoe collection. And words cannot describe how flabbergasted I was when I found out that this is his arcade mode ending and not a sponsored ad. Like, bro canonically takes over the world and it's like, world domination means nothing without some good ass J's. And it gets even better better because somebody posted this right at Jez Corden. I'll put their information down below as well. Said Tekken 8 marketing in London is going hard. Check this video out, bro. At first I thought it was fireworks. Um, it's actually not. I believe they're individual drones. Let's get it. Look at this. How dope is this? It's right by the bridge, like above it. Look at this. Check it out. That's amazing out now. How amazing is that? I wish they would do something like that here. If they have, I haven't seen it. That's amazing. God, the fact that they would do something like that, and I'll let it play again as I'm talking, but the only reason why I know this is because the last 4th of July, I saw some people posting this. Um, obviously not Tekken 8, but something else, right? And I was like, what the hell is that? I thought, I was like, have fireworks really got that much better in other countries? But I saw a breakdown of it. Apparently there's some type of light drones or something that they all go up and they're able to do these cool ass like, you know, animations and stuff. And I imagine this is the same thing because it looks identical and it's fucking fire, right? The fact, oh my God, like I said, if they can do some shit like that, why not do it here? I wanna see some stuff like that here. But anyway, I thought that was godlike. Okay, and now that we got that tech and hype out the way, let's go ahead and get into some nitty gritty, like some details slash concerns that the community is having. So I saw King J post this, right, just yesterday, saying thoughts after day one Tekken 8. As Lucina still has that crazy running move for obnoxious pressure, Jack still has the flip over move that Blue Spark Uppercut needs nerf. Victor damage is a bit overboard. Dragonov does crazy damage in combos. The friend system and inviting to matches needs some tweaking. Still need to see more, but really enjoying the game. Online is working and crossplay is decent. Still so much to experience and learn in the game. So there you have it. That's what's up man big shout out to king j he's always been a real cool dude so going on from there you look at the points that he kind of uh, made right still need to see more really enjoying the game but right here online is working that was a big concern right online is working cross play is decent hmm, so we'll see that i'm sure that's going to go deeper within the next few days right still more to experience but check this out that one thing that he said the friend system and inviting to matches needs some tweaking out of all the things he said, that one right now seems to be ringing true with a lot of people, right? Because even underneath that post, 
you see people like replying with this, right? Saying there needs to be a search feature to find friends on cross platform and continuing friends slash invite system needs major tweaks. I don't know, of course, this is underneath that. I don't know how to add people. Gotta add on Steam first or go to a lobby and add them from there. And even below that one, I see Dr. Platinum saying, is there any way to invite people without them being on your friends list? I could not find out how for anything. So obviously a major concern, right? People are like, we just got the game, but we wanna play with other people, namely our friends as well, and we're having a hard time doing it, so it might need some tweaking. Now, obviously it's still new. People gotta figure it out. So it remains to be seen, but I saw Inconsiderate Raccoon, right? At Raccoon Prevails, post what might be a solution. Let's check it out. He said, okay, if you wanna add your friends on Tekken 8 on cross platforms, here's what you have to do. Number one, get their ticket or Tekken ID. You can look this up in their profiles or press L3 or or R3, I think, or whatever that button is on your controller or your stick that changes your name to numbers. Number two, once you have your friend's Tekken ID, you go to online replays, open the menu and click on search by Tekken ID. You'll find a replay from your friend, click on it and press the profiles, whichever side your friend is on. Number three, on their profile, press the button on the bottom that says profile menu, then Tekken 8 friend request and you have them at it. But he actually wraps it up right here saying, this is the bootleg way to do it until they add an easier way, right? Somebody down below says, you can also do it if you both go to the same private session. If I remember correctly, just go to profile or something like that, select your friend and send a request. I'm not in front of the game right now, so I don't exactly know the steps. Raccoon responds saying, yeah, you can do it like that too. I was just telling people how to do it without having to go, go through all of that. So there you have it. Obviously it doesn't appear to be the easiest thing to do. And then it gets deeper. Somebody's like, what if I'm on PlayStation? Do I have to go to the invitation, all that other stuff, right? I'll put those tweets on the screen so you can read them right now. But trust me, it's possible, obviously. People are looking forward to the crossplay. And I would imagine, this is me just wishing well, but I imagine, right, that since Bandai is being so godlike with the, with the turnaround time and the responses and being active with the community, that it's only a matter of time before they see this from the community and they make the changes needed, right? Because people just want to play. They love the game. They love the hype. How y'all feeling? Let me know. And that it is, ladies and gents. Definitely let me know how you all feeling. Thank you guys for the amazing love. I wish I could post two videos today because there's so much more we got to talk about, but I don't have the time. So more than likely, it'll be tomorrow. So before we get out of here, the latest Patreons, Callum O'Neill, thank you so much for joining. And then Fuang Lam, thank you for the continued support. Because if you guys don't remember, Fuang actually just won the cross up. He won the personalized cross up. He just messaged me, what was it, yesterday, saying thank you. He had me autograph it. It was a blessing. Thank you, congratulating. Not only won that, but became a Patreon. Thank you for the amazing love, man. And you already know, I don't know what it is, but I know it's about to get better. Love y'all forever. Peace. Blah, 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 subscribe. And now for that moment of FGC bliss. So for those that don't know, Frosty Frostings is actually going on this weekend. We'll talk about it tomorrow, but there's an update, a special update coming from none other than Punk the God. He posted this saying, there's really grown men leaving full shit in the toilet without flushing at Frosty's like brother. Y'all gotta act like you have some home training. It's so disgusting seeing that shit. There's full grown men leaving full shit in the toilet at Frosty Fostings. You heard it here first. You don't gotta go to other sources. You don't gotta go to event hubs or Jayuna or Say Jam. You heard it here from Button Check. There's full shits from full men, full grown men in the toilets. Full ones.